Okay, so I guess we can get started. Um, so good evening once again. Um, so my name is Satish. Uh, I uh, I work as a TM consultant in uh, one of the major uh, uh, pharma organization, and uh, so I also am involved in uh, training activities. So I'm here to share. Uh, whatever I know in DM world with you, so that uh, maybe you can you can grasp you know the functionalities what uh, uh, what are important in the DM world and uh, get started with your DM careers also. And uh, so this is going to be thirty days uh, thirty days or one hour per day kind of a session. And today this is going to be on uh, TM terminologies, and then we'll discuss about uh, transportation management, um, you know, necessity or requirement and things like that, and then touch upon a bit of architecture and uh, and the evolution part of it. So TM has uh, its own evolution. It started off way back in the earlier versions of SAP, and then it kind of uh, matured over a period of time. That's what we are going to discuss uh, today, and uh, <clears throat> and uh, at every stage, you know, we'll have uh, any questions or things like that, um, which you may have during the process of our discussion. So we'll uh, address that, uh, address those questions uh, as we go by. Okay. All right, so uh, let's understand the, the fundamentals. So basically, uh, what comprises of transportation management? Um, well, when we talk about transportation management, uh, typically we have uh, certain uh, players in the, you know, which make up a relationship in, in the entire business of transportation activities irrespective of whichever industry it is, uh, you know, of course, where transportation is relevant, um, like for example, automobile industry or uh, retail or pharma or any of these industries where you have uh, goods manufactured, right? Goods are produced and goods have to be transported. I mean, we're not talking about, uh, we're talking about services also, uh, we we are we will talk about goods and services both of them. So for transporting goods, you need services of somebody called carrier. So we are going to talk uh, goods as well as services. So both will be a part of your transportation activity, right? But it all starts somewhere. Somebody by name Kanzani, uh, he is the customer. So somebody a customer would order for certain products, maybe um, the consignee could be an IT company, for example, ordering for some computers, servers, or so on and so forth. So maybe the person is ordering for that. And definitely he has to place a purchase order for the products which he wants to uh, have it uh, in his uh, organization. And uh, he will place a purchase order on the consigner. So this consigner is the manufacturer. So he probably would manufacture, you know, laptops or, um, you know, uh, the servers, uh, all those kind of things. Or it could be any other industry. Maybe it could be uh, pharma or it could be automobile or whatever. So this particular uh, organization, typically in a layman language, typically in a business language, you call them as consigner, or uh, either you call them as consigner or you call them as a manufacturer, or you call them as a shipper. Typically, all those all those words uh, are attributed to this entity: consigner, manufacturer, or uh, shipper. Okay, so to this person, and consignee would be the customer to whom the goods are to be transported to. So this is the one who raises the purchase uh, purchase order. And uh, this person typically, uh, he might, uh, uh, he would, what does he do? He, he has to raise some document based on the purchase order, right? So maybe he will process a sales order. He'll say, okay, I'll process a sales order. And then 
he will then have to uh, now he has an obligation to deliver the products to him now there are various ways of doing that right you know either he can deliver it by himself or he can employ somebody uh, these are two options which he has right it's typically commonsensically thinking uh, he can deliver it with his own uh, fleet of vehicles right so so he can either do that or uh, if he has say for example international business right you know he is doing his uh, business in say some 30 40 or 50 countries and all that and uh, so it remains uh, he is business to be the main focus so obviously he doesn't want to have his fleet and all that and in today's world everything uh, is outsourced if it is not your core business so that's the mantra from that standpoint he would like to leverage uh, options because if he owns uh, you know fleet at every country or every you know his own company and all that stuff with his own vehicles uh, open up a, a unit there and then you know have fleet and all that kind of stuff maybe it is uh, it's going to be uh, you know more expensive uh, than managing his own uh, you know than uh, um, you know outsourcing it to some Uh, expert service providers, right? So typically, he outsources it to the freight forwarder, and uh, the freight forwarder in turn, um, the freight forwarder in turn um, would, uh, you know, uh, would take the help of somebody else. Normally, the freight forwarder also will not own the, you know, asset. That means he will not own the ocean or sorry, uh, uh, ship. <laughs> or he will not own the truck or uh, you know all those things he he probably will not do that so what this person will have a lot of contacts with different uh, you know mode of transporters you know different carriers so whether it is ocean or air or road or whatever he will have multi multiple contact base not just in one country but in several countries so what this person does he will want to leverage this freight forwarder okay and then this freight forwarder uh, will uh, optimize uh, with the carriers suitable carriers and then he will uh, engage these carriers to pick up the goods from the consignor and then transport it to the consignor so this is the whole story about the transportation relationship typically there are uh, you know at this point there are four uh, four uh, players the customer the manufacturer the middleman the you know logistic service provider um, i mean both are logistic service providers but this is a i would say a middleman and he is a carrier so this is these are the main players and obviously there has to be some binding between these players correct so there has to be some binding so from that standpoint the, there are some contracts which are available between them so there is some purchase contract this is for the product uh there's a purchase contract for the product itself right and then there is a service contract these are all like services isn't it so between the freight forwarder and the you know the uh, the manufacturer there is some service contract service related contract and again this is uh, you know the service related contract from a transportation Uh, point of view this is service from the transportation enablement you can say so this is the kind of a relationship which exists in the transportation world typically this is how uh, relationship exist now moving on to the next slide so this gives a little more insight in terms of uh, um, how this particular relationship gets unfolded so we have seen four players here and now let us see how this four players relationship gets unfolded a, a bit more oh, sorry three we will we'll now focus we will not get into the consignee part anymore now we will see the transportation perspective right so from that standpoint if you see here you have something called as a role okay what is the role they are playing uh, a shipper so we have this sir vijay dev chalo theek hai na theek hai bhai theek hai mama ji
Okay. So we have a, a role here. Um, and then uh, we have multiple uh, um, players or multiple players, right? We Now we are introduced to a word called shipper. Like I said earlier, shipper is basically the consigner, the one who is manufacturing the products, right? So you call him as consigner or you call him as a shipper or a manufacturer. So it is, uh, they're all similar. And then you have a carrier whom we introduced here saying that he's the one who owns the asset, owns the transportation vehicles and all that kind of stuff. So carrier could be, uh, you know, it could be a ship uh, owner or a truck owner or something like that. And then you have a forwarder. So we have introduced this forwarder also here, the one who coordinates between the manufacturer and then the uh, carrier. So that is a forwarder. And then there is somebody else called integrated LSP. So we'll come to this later on. But then on the other side, if you see here, you have certain uh, description of those rules. You know, what exactly those people will, uh, you know, uh, play. So in a very simple terms, the shipper is the one who, you know, who produces the goods, or rather who manufactures the goods. But typically, he doesn't do the transportation. So he's not involved in transporting. So what he does, he uh, takes the help of the carriers and forwarders and all that. So therefore, um, he is termed as one peer, the shipper company, right? Termed as one peer. Now I'll take you to what these things are. So basically, this is uh, the supply chain. We are talking about the entire end-to-end -end supply chain, right? So on one hand, you are integrating with the vendor. On the other hand, you are integrating with the uh, what do you call customer? So receiving company is the customer, and here sender company probably is uh, is a is a vendor who is uh, you know sourcing the raw materials and all that to the manufacturer. So all the sourcing. So when you are having the sourcing uh, of raw materials, you will also be using some transportation and things like that. So that's what is represented here. And here you are representing the manufacturing company, which is transporting the finished goods uh, to the customer. So this is the logistics function of a supply chain. So this is what it depicts. Then we talked about the shipper. So what is his role? So the one who does his production and no transportation. So typically it's attributed as one PL. And uh, next comes your carrier. So carrier can operate on both sides. Uh, Obviously, they are ready to pick up uh, commodities from the vendor to the production company or a manufacturing company, or they pick up the finished goods and then uh, you know deliver it to the customer. So they don't bother; they'll uh, support both the logistic operations, and uh, they are the ones who will have contracting uh, with uh, you know the sender company, shipper company and then with the receiving company and things like that. So typically, typically uh, the carriers, they are unimodal in the sense like uh, um, they would have, uh, they would either focus on truck or um, road transport or ocean transport or uh, air or something like that. So typical characteristics is that they are unimodal transportation and they operate the asset. So this is their characteristic of the carrier. Right, like uh, you know, you have various carriers, uh, but they it is not necessary that they are unimodal. I mean, you they may have, um, they may be multimodal also. It is possible, uh, but then typically they are classified as uh, forwarders. The ones who are operating multimodal, they are classified as forwarders, and they are termed as third-party logistics. So normally, what happens this. Uh, like DHL and uh, FedEx and all these guys, they are your third party logistics and they will employ the carriers to perform uh, subcontracted to carriers to do the transportation and uh, all that. But they do typically not own the assets or assetless, I mean, uh, less assets or whatever. Okay, so they would not have the ownership of the assets, like shipper would not, uh, they can, the shipper can have some assets. Like for example, if you want to transport uh, between, um, you know, 
your warehouses and all that within plants and all, you may want to have your own transport for whatever reasons. That is possible. I mean, they can have it. The same manner, forward, forwarder, a third party logistics, for some reason, they may have uh, some specialty vehicles or something, but uh, it's very minimal. So I would say the major, majority of the transportation is handled by the carriers. Uh, they do the set operating. There is one last category, which typically is integrated LSP. So, so what they do is that uh, they are the ones who operate, uh, they are called as 4PL. Why they operate, uh, why they're called as 4PL is because, so the payer of the entire uh, business is the shipper. So of course the customer pays and uh, the shipper bills the customer, that's fine. But uh, basically, it is the shipper who takes the decision of engaging a forwarder or carrier or so uh, for the entire transportation activity. So, and the shipper perhaps doesn't have knowledge, much knowledge, I would say, or it's not his uh, area to focus on the international transportation activities and things like that. So there is somebody who uh, focuses on that domain to help the shipper and um, also the carriers or forwarders in terms of the trends or in terms of the research or in terms of consulting and all that kind of activities, knowledge base and the trends and uh, things like that, that would be your integrated LSP. So supply chain organization consulting. So like Ernst & Young or um, Boston Consulting Group or Deloitte or these consulting organizations are the ones who have a division in their company which focuses on the logistics or transportation. So they will advise in terms of, you know, what are the trends and, uh, 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 you know, they, they probably do survey, uh, they probably publish, uh, you know, the, um, the, the trends and, uh, uh, and, and uh, you know, they, they, uh, they, they get, uh, uh, they get to certain, uh, uh, and they are also part of certain um, associations uh, across the globe and all that stuff, right? So those are the kind of companies which will fall under this category. So that's how the entire supply chain or transportation perspective is uh, kind of organized. Okay, so uh, yeah, so that is that. And uh, okay, now if there's any question for questions uh, uh, for now, just let me know. Yeah, Satish, one question. Uh, yeah. In the previous uh, slide, you have shown mm -hmm. this uh, 1PL, 2PL, and uh, 3PL, 4. Yeah. 4PL, right? What does right. PL stand for, actually? Part, third party logistics, party, P A R T Y. Oh, party logistics. Party. This is one party logistics. Yeah, that's the industry terminology. Uh, oh, okay. Two party logistics, th third party logistics, fourth party logistics is uh, the way industry uh, identifies uh, different. Suppose if you say, 2PL, then is a carrier. That means your okay. shipper is directly engaging with carrier, right? Okay. So th third party logistics means shipper is engaging with forwarder and forwarder in turn will engage with carrier. So oh, one, okay. two, ah, like that. So that's how they have categorized, uh, uh, you know, people have to talk in some code language or whatever it is, but uh, uh, when whenever you say 2PL, it is carrier. 3PL is a forwarder, and uh, these are the characteristics of them. Uh, something like that. And 4PL is somebody who does consulting. Okay. Uh, hi, Satish. Yeah. Hi. Uh, yeah. Can you tell uh, me where exactly we will fit in this, you know, whole chart that you are showing right now? Are we a PL4 as a TM consultant? or somewhere in between we are doing our jobs? Okay, actually we don't fit anywhere here. <laughs> so uh, we don't, we are from the IT side, correct? This is a business perspective. Oh, Satish, Harish this side. Yeah. Yeah, uh, in supply chain, there is a standard term called 3 pl okay? So right. 3PL in the sense, the third party logistics service that will come warehouse on the logistics every, that is a standard term. So, but where this 
one pl and two pl on four pl will be is is that is also a standard terms in supply chain or for understanding purpose or a study purpose that we are creating created here no no this is the this is the industry standard i have not okay. created anything on my own okay 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 yeah i have not created anything i am not telling something from my uh, no, no. creation Uh, yeah. Basically, I'm from Cologesics, right? So there, so, that we you I heard only three PL, but uh, this is for yeah, yeah, uh, the, yeah, one PL, two PL, four PL. Okay, great, great. Yeah. So these are Done. okay. Now, when you say three PL, the question okay. arises: Why three PL? See that we are depending upon the third party. Ha. Huh. So what is the third? What is the second party then? That's what. Uh, second party also I considered on the first party also considered three PL only. Ah, so that is uh, not uh, uh, you know in my opinion uh, okay. it is not the correct understanding. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So the the industry terminology is okay. that uh, the shipper. If you look at the origin of business, so okay. a shipper is the one who can uh, who can own the trucks, correct? Yes. Yes, shipper can own the truck. So in that case, is uh, is a single person, right? He, he yes, is yes, is termed yes. as yeah, he is termed, termed as one PL. So uh, okay, th that's okay. how he's termed as, right? Now, if shipper wants to uh, say that okay, now you know sometimes uh, he's expanding his business, mm -hmm. right? So if he's expanding his business, then he needs some uh, additional uh, trucks to be transported, right? So in that okay. case. Yeah. immediately what he can do is he will say okay um, can i engage some carrier he will not go to a forwarder he will simply immediately think that okay can i engage a carrier right i just need another truck to be transported so what obviously do, yes ha uh, he will call a carrier and he'll say okay boss uh, you know uh, i you know i have this urgent uh, something you know to be delivered and all that kind of stuff so he will call a carrier that means he will call the he will employ a truck which is not his asset mm -hmm. so 2 pl so second party he will engage the shipper will engage the second party so okay. then it is between shipper and carrier only okay okay then what happens then he okay let's assume that okay his business is going on and all that kind of stuff so he has got uh, one uh, his own asset then he has uh, one carrier then uh, he is increased his business Uh, so he 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 has some he wants some competition so he has engaged a couple of carriers two three four at some point he is expanding his business into other countries and all mm -hmm. that then it will be a headache for him then he said boss how can i i mean i cannot be everywhere and then manage this carrier thing and all that kind of stuff so what okay. do i do then i'll say okay i just want somebody to uh, manage all these things so somebody will come and say okay the dhl or some fellow will come and say yes, that, sir don't worry about it i have my offices in all countries and uh, okay. i'll take care of all this so don't worry about that so who are you you will say shipper and say i am 3pl so what do you mean by 3pl what do you do he said no look you just give me what you want and we'll have an agreement between us and i will engage the carriers i'll give you the best uh, ports uh, i will because i not i i just don't work with uh, one shipper i have multiple companies with whom i do business so i will take your goods and i will consolidate uh, in uh, in the ocean in a container maybe right so i yes. will consolidate and i will give you good rates uh, all that stuff and i'll manage the carrier you don't worry about that so i will give you good rates and you you just uh, you know have a peaceful uh, uh, business right that's where the 3pl comes into picture so third party logistics Yes, picture. yes, that yeah. is third pillar logistics. Okay, and so as you said, that one, two, three, four PLs are in the chain link. That that uh, we, we we do not uh, skip the one PL or uh, directly to the three PL and from directly to the fourth PL. So first we need to approach one and again second PL come into picture and after that four three PL and finally uh, that fourth PL will be help us on a in a technical part or in a IT part, right? In our supply chain. so 4 pl is somebody who does uh, you know um, you know business consulting uh, okay. advisory to either forwarder or like uh, these companies like accenture or uh, 
um, you know, Deloitte or Ernst yes. & Young. Those are such companies okay. in Fort PL category. So they will do a lot of research. They will do a lot of, uh, you know, market analysis and things like that, right? And then they will advise uh, the trends and those uh, academic related activities or consulting related activities. Those things uh, are done by somebody. And for them, they have termed as 4PL. This is the industry okay. terminology, okay? Okay, okay. All right, so let's get going. Sure. Yeah, so let me just, uh, you know, go. Now let's get into SAP world. So SAP uh, transportation management, typically we got introduced to these people, uh, shipper, consignee, freight forwarder and carrier. So we are now familiar with them. Now let us uh, get, go a little into SAP world and then try to understand how does SAP world look like? So there is uh, transportation management we see here, and then there is warehouse management we see on the other side, right? And, uh, and then there is something like tracking and tracing, uh, which is also a very important, uh, you know, functionality. So typically uh, we call it as event management, right? Events tracking as the truck uh, leaves the, uh, you know, the shipping point or plant or so uh, towards the customer, uh, the tracking could be done. Events can be tracked. So that is your event management basically. So tracking and tracing is one of the functionality, additional functionality. And uh, so transportation management uh, would majorly consist of four uh, functions. Uh, typically major functions would be the order management. So whether it is uh, uh, order, uh, you know, uh, related to uh, uh, forwarding order. I will come to those function of those terminologies. So basically, taking order from the shipper, for example, uh, and then uh, maybe the, uh, the 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 third party logistics company will take the order and then process it. Okay, or uh, uh, you know, or the order could be processed by a manufacturing company itself if it is uh, also handling the transportation management. So we will see those uh, variations. But there is some order management which happens. Uh, so that is one functionality. The next comes, how do you plan that particular order uh, in terms of the delivery? So how the planning uh, will happen, how the the trucks are uh, identified, how capacities are, how loading happens, how capacities are, uh, you know, planned and all that kind of stuff. Uh, will have, How schedules are maintained. So those kind of things will have to be planned, you know, into one truck or uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, some compatibility issues may be there. Uh, maybe you cannot, uh, you know, transport uh, a, few, uh, a few commodities in one uh, one truck or something like that, right? So, I mean, many things are to be planned in transportation planning related activities. Optimizer is very important uh, functionality in transportation planning where it does uh, automated costing, cost and cons cost and constraint related uh, planning and schedules and uh, capacities and so on and so forth. So manually things can be done, optimal op uh, using a, a automate you know, in automated form, it can be done and things like that. So as to optimize. So this transportation planning focus ultimately is to optimize the transportation. So that is the crux of transportation planning. And then once it is planned, then what happens is, okay, you have identified, even carrier identification is also part of transportation planning. So once the carrier is identified, then what you do, uh, you will tell the carrier to, okay, you take this particular uh, freight order or something like that, some documentation, and then pick up the goods from the warehouse and then, you know, uh, transport it to the customer. So this is your transportation execution part where your tracking and tracing and all that stuff will come into picture, execution part of it. And comes your freight settlement. So obviously you'll have to settle the freight with your uh, you have to settle the freight with your carrier, right? So, and also 
uh, if it is you know engaged uh, for a, a freight forward uh, sorry a freight forwarder or uh, third party logistics if you are engaged with him you also need to settle with him on both sides right so uh, if you are directly engaged with a carrier you settle with the carrier but if you are indirectly engaged with a freight forwarder uh, then you settle with the freight forwarder and uh, and then uh, there is uh, uh, two kinds of settlement which we will talk about Okay, so freight settlement happens, uh, you know, uh, from an LSP perspective, it has one uh, dimension, and from a shipper perspective, it has another dimension. So now we are here, we are talking about a shipper. Okay, we will also look at uh, how it looks like from an LSP perspective, but right now we are looking at a shipper that is this person, this consigner. So how does he settle? Is what we are trying to look at. So in this case. The shipper is the one who has implemented transportation management, right? He has got his uh, S4 HANA and he's got transportation management implemented and uh, he has engaged a carrier. And uh, in this case, uh, you know, he can, uh, because he, he, he can also engage a freight forwarder and uh, all that. So he has engaged a carrier, so he can settle uh, with the carrier, right? So this is also possible and he can settle with the freight forwarder and things like that. So, in, uh, and then you have warehouse management on the other hand, inbound processing, storage of operations, outbound processing. So these are all little warehouse management uh, uh, you know, functionalities. Um, we will see that later on at some point when we uh, discuss the integration part of it, how the integration happens between EM and EWM. Okay, this is just a simple overview. So takeaway from this slide is that, uh, these four functionalities are the core functionalities which ex exist in transportation management. Okay, and uh, so so this is again the you know a, a little bit of uh, supply chain, a vendor on one side and a receiver on the other side. So you have vendor, a material uh, delivery or a goods delivery. So logistics is involved from a vendor perspective. Then uh, transportation happens. Uh, uh, you know, so in the manufacturer distributor, this is a shipper. Okay, production, product delivery, then goods receipt. Good is receiving the goods here and is delivering the goods here. So this is where the transportation uh, comes into picture. So there's a why this is uh, uh, interesting is because the entire thing is the supply chain. So from the vendor till the customer, the entire thing is the supply chain. And this portion is very clearly depicted as logistics. Okay, these are all inter, I mean, the whatever logistics are processed here, uh, you know, and then the, the crux of the matter is the transportation. So transportation happens in between here, transfer facilities and all that stuff will be there. So this is a, a clear picture, which talks about the managing of transportation management. So whatever orders we are talking about, order management, planning, execution, settlement, right? So all of them have to happen for this, for the inbound. This is the inbound part. And this is the outbound part, okay? the transportation. So, the, the four, so all the four functionalities are to operate here, right? So that is what it's depicting. Now coming to uh, two scenarios which I talked about, right? So there is in transportation management, there are two scenarios which we talk about. Uh, let me see if I'm, oh, we are already <laughs> a lot to cover. Okay. Um, right. So transportation management has two uh, scenarios. Uh, one is called shipper scenario. The other one is called LSP scenario. Okay. So uh, let me highlight a major differences. So what happens is in a shipper scenario, uh, as I said, uh, the shipper will directly engage with the carrier. So what typically happens is the, the shipper uh, gets a purchase order, right? So from here, he gets a purchase order. From here, he gets a purchase order, isn't it? So once he gets a purchase order, what he does, uh, he processes a sales order based on the purchase order. And then, he, he, so this is a scenario in a, transportation management in a standalone example, so that it is clear. So in standalone, what happens? You have a ECC system, and then you have a transportation management system. 
So what happens is you process a sales order in the ECC system, and then you create a replica of sales order in the transportation management. This is just a replica, exactly the same. Based on this, the freight unit is processed and then freight orders are processed and settlements are done. Okay. So in this case, what is happening is the shipper is engaging with the carrier directly. Right? Shipper is engaging directly with the carrier and therefore he has to settle with the carrier. So then what happens? The carrier uh, will send an invoice to the shipper and say that, boss, I have uh, transported this vehicle, uh, this uh, goods to your customer and this is the amount which you are supposed to pay. So then what happens is the TM system will have to uh, you know, consolidate all the data related to the carrier's transportation and all that, right? Charges and all that, uh, and various services and all, you know? And then it has to send it to the ECC system, uh, you know? And uh, there, what happens is in the MM, this is the SD part of the ECC, and this is the MM part. So this is the SD part and this is the MM part. So in the MM part, what happens is, uh, uh, you know, a purchase order, a service purchase order is created and then service entry sheet is created, which will uh, recognize the services, uh, you know, which are entered, which are provided, and then an invoice is set up. So this is how the integration happens uh, in a typical uh, ECC and uh, trans, uh, what do you call a standalone uh, system. Now, we have a, a what do you call embedded system. So in embedded system, uh, the, the whole thing is uh, coming together. We will see that how that embedded system is uh, looks like. But uh, the main takeaway from this particular diagram which you are seeing in front is that the shipper scenario settles with a carrier. Just you can remember that. Shipper scenario settles with the carrier and a settlement always happens in uh, your uh, ERP system. Uh, no financial uh, dealings happen in a transportation management system. A transportation management system only uh, does uh, what you call order, manage, order management, planning, execution and freight settlement. That's it. It's not going to, uh, uh, it will create a freight settlement document and it will send the details to ERP and it is the settlement, the financials and controlling and all those aspects happen only in ECC. So that is the thing. Now coming to LSP. So LSP, what is LSP doing? LSP, assuming that LSP has the transportation management, SAP transportation management. So what does it do? So as, as we discussed, LSP does uh, interact with a shipper. So in this case, the, the, for the LSP, the customer is the shipper, the one who has a manufactured goods. Uh, so this person, he tells the you know DHL saying that, look, I have these goods. Uh, these have to be transported to my customer, the his customer, right? So then he, what he will do, he will, uh, you know, this LSP, he will create something called a forwarding order. So this is somewhat uh, similar to the sales order. So this is from a LSP perspective. So he will create a forwarding order and then he will take the order from him saying that, okay, these are the items which need to be transported so that he will take the order. Then he will, uh, you know, process it in normal way, like how this is processing is done, freight units, freight. Then he will engage a carrier. Even this, this person will engage the carrier. And uh, uh, so that means if you will see here, this person has two settlements to be done. So one settlement is with the uh, customer, right? Because uh, he's the one who has given an order to uh, to the LSP saying that, uh, please, uh, you know, help me pick up these commodities, uh, you know, to be transported. They said, okay, fine. So he has to, so this person raises an invoice to the, to the shipper or the manufacturer, and uh, he gets the money from him. And then he in turn has to pay to the carrier because the carrier is the one who has delivered. So this process remains the same here. See here, this process remains the same because here shipper is directly engaging and here uh, LSP is directly uh, engaging, is, is uh, sorry, is also engaging the carrier here. Okay, only thing is here, the, the difference is only here. The difference is here, why? Because the shipper is, uh, you know, he's directly engaging the carrier 
so therefore uh, that that uh, you know invoice this this portion this part part will not come into picture so in the lsp scenario this will come into picture that means he has to invoice it to the customer so these are uh, two major so any implementation uh, any uh, you know sap uh, tm projects and all that um, majorly uh, the first thing to be understood is that is it a shipper scenario or is it a lsp scenario so if it is a shipper scenario you are engaging with carriers directly and then you are following this process if it is lsp scenario then you have to settle with both of them right so this is the process okay and uh, yeah so typically uh, in a this is a difference which i was talking about right so in a shipper scenario in a, a typical um, what we call standalones uh, so now we are talking about the te little technology part right so earlier we used to have erp ecc and then we used to have transportation management so they were two different systems and they were integrated with the pi uh, so some activities used to happen in erp certain activities used to happen in tm and they are integrated and things like that so sales order and all those uh, order related activities sales order purchase orders you know they used to happen in erp and transportation activities happen in um, tm and again uh, there is this settlement so sd comes here then uh, then uh, tm takes over and then mm comes here so that was the case uh, in, in in earlier right even today of course many people use the same system so you have ecc and tm this is how it is integrated with a something called core interface the cif and all that so that we will see later on so pi uh, you know process interface can integrate between these two seamlessly and the data keeps moving uh, you know uh, between the systems and all that stuff and now in sap tm in s4 hana entire thing has come into one box so there is no pi interface required so sales order happens delivery you know tm everything happens uh, in one system itself right is for hana so this is uh, the thing so what you are going to work on the access to the system will be s4 hana 2021 and as i said uh, sap tm has order management as a little uh, more functionality like subcontracting will be there freight cost accounting event management freight cost calculations some you know these are the planning and optimization we'll talk about master data and uh, things like that so these are all uh, part of the sap tm now let's uh, try to understand a, a little bit of uh, you know uh, simple terminologies so i mean i think this is very visible and uh, uh, you know common sensical ones less than truck load right now look at this ltl so we call when we say less than truck load you see this is how it is less than truck load that means that uh, um, you can engage a carrier uh, you know you can say that okay look i just have only this part to be transported right so then you engage in this with this carrier from a less than truck load perspective so this truck will carry the goods of uh, different uh, customers so general cargo or pieces are moved on a truck together with cargo from other shippers so this is your less than truck load and similarly full truck load is something which maybe one shipper will engage the entire truck so that is called as a full truck load okay so it depends upon the business scenario whether what is uh, it depends upon you know whether you want to engage the entire uh, truck or partially Um, you know, it's it's uh, typically the sh the shippers uh, or freight forwarders they will have both the options and then they will exercise uh, whatever is uh, optimum. Yeah, this is one, and on and this is typically on the truck side, and then you have uh, you know on a ocean side, for example, uh, is from a container perspective. Typically on ocean side, on a container perspective, again you have le uh, less than container load and the. Uh, full container load so this is on the ocean side and this is on your you know um uh, uh, you know uh, mode of uh, road side or uh, mode of transportation side right so movement type these are certain uh, uh, you know movement types in shipping i wanted to share so there are various movement types you know which happen in transportation 
so like you know if you talk about direct shipment though so ship this is only one uh, you know from one point to the other like for example um, if you look at uh, dunzo if you look at dunzo what do they do they just pick up from one place and they just go and deliver it right so i mean that i'm, I'm just giving a very uh, simple example but uh, the point is that uh, it, one mode of transportation is um, uh, is employed from a shipper to consignee that's your direct shipment then unimodal network is basically uh, you have a one mode of transportation but you may have different uh, stop points like you know you may have uh, transfer facilities you know maybe it is uh, across the border or across uh, some checkpoints or something like that so that becomes uh, unimodal network so you may want to recognize these locations also in your planning so that is what it is so you make so basically you will call uh, a pre carriage and a main carriage and then on carriage right we'll come to these things later on but then this is one scenario the other one could be multimodal network shipment right so here you may have different mode of transportation so you may have this is what we typically understand right so you may have a pickup and then local station where you consolidate all the uh, you know uh, the carrier may consolidate all of them into his truck and then a uh, container freight, freight station uh, he will make things ready and then he will send it to the port and port uh, you know he puts it into the vessel and this becomes a main carriage so this is the pre carriage this is the main carriage and then this is a on carriage right on carriage is again uh, you know it's a sort of a similar replica on the other side of it and it delivers it. so this is your multimodal network transportation with different mode of transportation and sometimes you may also have port to port shipment right what happens shipper transports it to the port and then uh, the agent employed here will put it on the uh, ocean uh, the, the vessel and then the vessel uh, delivers it on the other side and uh, then there is some agent uh, you know uh, either agent picks it up or uh, the, the consignee himself does the self delivery so self pick up and self delivery is a characteristics of port to port ship right so this person then this this consignee picks it up from here export shipment could be uh, you know somewhat similar one but uh, here uh, there is a pre carriage consolidation is happening into the truck and then put it in the port and then the consignee's responsibility to uh, uh, to pick it up right in this case port to port shipment it is possible that the self pick up and self del delivery could be from the shipper itself the shipper will send it and he may have his own office there then he will pick it up and then you know send it so in this case in export shipment it could be like consignee himself takes the responsibility going to the you know uh, to the port and then pick it up and then deliver it. so these are certain mode of transportation movement types in shipping just to give some idea and this is what uh, you know uh, we just talked about direct shipment unimodal and all that stuff pick up main carriage and dry age is dry age refers to the more consolidated container facility uh, at the port so basically uh, this is where uh, you know people will uh, maybe uh, different uh, what do you call uh, uh, differentiate various uh, freight units uh, you know for further transport or maybe do some service activities and all that kind of stuff that is one location so this is somewhere here no dry age yeah so make, you know, making things ready uh, to be to be uh, put it on po on the uh, on the vessel or uh, once it is uh, transported then uh, make it ready to uh, to have further like here you see this example here for the transport uh, you know making things ready for further transport so that is your dry age moving a uh, move of consolidated or containered cargo right haulage is basically it's a you know it's a, it's a uh, it's a normally haulage is uh, associated with uh, uh, long transport act, uh, transport uh, situations you know, typically uh, on um, uh, uh, to make things ready for uh, long transport right you know you have long transport in the main carriage normally right pre carriage and so you have the haulage uh, preparation activities uh, you know uh, in the pre carriage uh, you know uh, typically that's uh, what is done on both sides 
short haulage is done on a pre-carriage or on, on carriage. So haulage is nothing but a uh, duration, duration of transportation um, activity. And uh, this, these are the, some terminologies. One of the most important terms uh, in transportation uh, is uh, INCO terms, international commercial terms, right? So international commercial terms, uh, like for example, if you see here, uh, these are some standard, these are all global standards, right? International commercial terms, global standard. So mode of transport. Um, so if you see here, from, from the first one to the last one, it's all about sequential activities. See what happens, export packing. Then you have to, suppose this export packing is happening in say, for example, in some country, like for example, it's happening in India, right? So export packing, export formalities have to be looked at, loading at the point of origin, origin inland freight, origin port charges, forward fees, ocean air freight, destination port charges. So it is going on the other side, maybe Dubai or some um, Hamburg or something like that. Then custom clearance, import duties, over, uh, over the transport, uh, transport right out of your factory till it reaches the destination, right? There are so many things which are happening. And who pays for that? So that's the uh, that's the point uh, of this particular matrix. So obligations and charges. So who is going to pay for what is the thing which need to be uh, considered. So in this case, if you have you have all these standard codifications. So X works. That means if you apply X works, right? That means as soon as the um, as soon as uh, the, the, the commodity goes out of the factory, the buyer will take care of all these charges. The buyer has to pay for all of them. He will, he will uh, pay for the, all of these things, right? So if you apply EXW, X works, right? Similarly, on the other hand, DDP. So DDP means what? Delivered duty paid. That means the seller has to take care of the entire shipment. It is his responsibility. Right, and in between you have several codifications uh, as per the mode of transportation. So any mode, you know, ocean only, and all that. So based on the mode of transportation, you uh, you based on the contract with the customer, you apply a different uh, freight terms, and uh, that implies okay who's uh, bearing what cost. Okay, so if it if your freight order. Uh, which uh, the carrier is uh, having, uh, it says that, okay, it is X works. That means, okay, it's understood that, uh, okay, all of these are paid by the customer, right? So this is how INCO terms are, are used. So you'll get familiarized with this uh, in your course, but this particular chart will uh, explain uh, what those things are. Uh, so you have various party roles in transportation, ordering party, shipper or sender, Consignee. So ordering party is the one who orders the customer, the shipper we understood, the consignee or the recipient. That is the, again, there could be a, a person who receives it at the location, maybe at the factory or something. You have that person as a consignee and invoicing party, the party um, to whom the invoice for the shipment is sent, you know, someone who pays for the shipment. Okay. So that is the uh, uh, that is the invoicing party. Then the, there is someone who pays, maybe the bank or some um, uh, finance department or something. So there are certain roles which are there in transportation. We will see those uh, different kind of roles. Uh, but then uh, at a high level, these are certain roles we will have to see. We have seen those certain roles uh, right in the beginning, but as we get into the system, you will see uh, different roles performed. Okay, that is also important. Then of course, a few others, beneficial cargo owner. So the party that holds ownership for the cargo to be transported. Uh, so there could be a third party who is, is the beneficial of the cargo. This is especially valid if neither shipper nor consignee owns the goods, but there could be some third party who is the who has the contract legal right on the cargo. So that is also one possibility some notifying party, the party that needs to be notified on certain shipment milestones, right, when they are coming. So there could be certain notifying party, maybe this notifying party could be customer's customer, 
suppose if you are ordering some tiles from italy then some uh, builder might uh, be a notifying party or something like that if there's some major construction is going on or because uh, he needs some data for the scheduling or something like that then contracting or agreeing parties uh, party uh, yeah they basically who are all the people who are in agreement so they will be uh, identified importer and exporter forwarder or carrier uh, this is what so these are our certain roles which are typically as a, i'm just introducing them now so any questions here or maybe we can just uh, uh, go through uh, quickly as we have we don't have much time maybe oh guys if you have any kind of question please feel free to ask parvinder here you yeah. can also put your questions on the chat yeah, yeah put them on the chat yeah okay so some of the uh, some facts uh, basically why transportation management has uh, gained a lot of significance over a period of time um, uh, i mean today it's very significant because every nation at uh, the uh, government level they are uh, uh, they are trying to build up their infrastructure in such a manner that their uh, uh, you know uh, you know their uh, spend on the uh, the spend on the logistics uh, at a at a, uh, a country level is reduced. Okay, so they want to get the uh, in India the uh, the the average GDP spend is something like fourteen percent or something like that, and then the government is wanting to reduce it to say ten percent, like in US. So that's why you find uh, the Union Minister Nitin Gadkari trying to build a lot of infrastructure all across the country uh, for you know all the six lanes or this or that and all that stuff so with that what happens is you will find a lot of infrastructure a lot of support system and uh, uh, you know the the the, the price uh, the logistics price also will come down and uh, tracking and tracing and all that uh, you know will get optimized so there there's, there's a lot of things i mean honestly uh, it, it's very natural that uh, the facts themselves speak, uh, and then the number of customers uh, adopting transportation management seriously with uh, uh, additional functionalities like event management, tracking and tracing, and uh, several integrations. I will show you uh, is coming up. I mean, even in the, the projects which I'm I'm working on, I mean, uh, <laughs> you have a lot of uh, challenges in terms of integrating things. A lot of support uh, is required for different integration so a lot of work is there for you uh, waiting there okay so uh, this this uh, this is lot happening and as you as you can see in this diagram if you see the uh, you know the supply chain cost if you look at uh, some company which has implemented a transportation management system uh, this is uh, best in class if you see the what is that uh, 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 what color is that? But uh, brown, a uh, dark brown color, right? If you see the dark brown color, uh, it it uh, uh, gives a best in class uh, percentage. That is the supply chain cost. So in automobile, uh, if any organization has uh, implemented transportation management, they are spending something like four percent on supply chain. Whereas those who are not implementing transportation management and you know they are doing their business without a uh, you know optimize uh, without uh, tm functionality they are spending more on the supply chain cost by virtue of that your customers uh, are paying that kind of money and they will go out of business so that's a big uh, issue so this has to be many companies have to go into best in class it's not just in automotive but if just across the entire you know industry there is a pressure on the companies to reduce the transportation cost, uh, you know, and this is what is depicting. So that's the reason transportation management is so important today. Uh, so that's uh, the justification for it. And of course, there are certain other reasons we are very, very high level. I'll not go in detail into it. Uh, so demanding customers, margin pressure, global economy, the, you know, you, you have, uh, uh, fuel cost and all that of course there is uh, uh, renewable energy coming up sustainability the you know the environment the green factors 
then regulatory compliance. So security security considerations, export and um, uh, import compliance needs a proper like global trade system we have, right? Integration with GTS. So, uh, you know, that kind of stuff. And then uh, service differentiation. Now, obviously you need to have a best in breed, uh, you know, uh, landscape of uh, transportation management. So that is what is uh, driving to have a uh, transportation management uh, system. And uh, obviously, I mean, commonsensically, forget about all these things, but commonsensically, there was a there the companies typically will have something like this kind of a situation individual deliveries so you are employing uh, carriers individually uh, for you know getting raw materials to the factory right so then what happened somebody has said that look you know i will employ this is called milk run operations uh, typically how you gather milk from various uh, farmers right and then you get it to the factory and process the milk and all. That's that's how the milk run has come into picture. So this, so instead of employing four different uh, trucks, you are employing just one, gathering milk from various farms and all that individual, small small farmers and all, and then getting it to the factory to you know have the packaged milk and all that kind of stuff. So this is nothing but a simple example for us to understand the optimization. So this is what your optimization is all about. This is in a very manual kind of understanding, but uh, this is how things have moved from uh, one way of thinking to the other, right? And uh, well, this is like SAP was somewhere probably not in the in in the uh, uh, what do you call what what does it say? Uh, let me just yeah, not not in the leader. Uh, SAP was not in leader uh, probably. Yeah, leader. Uh, uh, but over a period of time, uh, it has gone into the matrix of a leadership. Okay, so uh, so it is really catching up uh, quite well. We'll see the evolution in just a few minutes from now. So that's why you know the SAP TM has taken over, and then now the system is now embedded. So earlier it used to be two systems. You know that kind of situation used to be there, but now we have a better uh, sort of a system. Um, I will quickly just uh, walk through the, this uh, evolution of SAP TM. Uh, it all started in a mainframe situation. So uh, right in mainframe situation, it used to be that I never worked on it, so I'll not talk much about it. LETRA, yes, I did work on this, but a very small, very uh, you know, small functionality. Uh, no carrying, no tendering, and all that stuff. Uh, nothing used to be there. Just uh, you know, uh, allocating some carrier, and that's it. Uh, you know, and send the goods. Uh, mostly, it is like a manual operation, I would say. But then, uh, SAP has come up with a, uh, another system, a separate application called SAP Transportation Management, and uh, it's a standalone application. And uh, it started with SAP. I think it was like you know six. I was involved in SAP six, uh, you know, six point zero, uh, quite briefly. But then it matured over a period of time uh, to 9.4, 9.56, and all that. And uh, yeah, <clears throat> and then uh, and then this is where the 9.5 and 9.6 are in uh, support. And in parallel, the transportation management uh, uh, matured uh, for shippers. So majorly, uh, you know, the the functionality was available for shippers. Uh, uh, you know, and then. Uh, in the year 2018 with the release, uh, the LSPs also, uh, the functionality for LSPs also was enhanced. And, uh, you know, since 2019, uh, things have uh, looked up quite well. So uh, this is where we are at this point in time. And of course, many companies are there uh, for us to support. A uh, lot, lot, lot company. They're just a simple uh, customer base, but there are hundreds and thousands of customers, thousands, right? And uh, so these are basically the carriers, suppliers, shippers. This is just a example to talk about. So tracking and tracing of all shipments. What are the benefits basically? Tracking and uh, tracing of shipments, monitoring and visibility. You know that's what is a great benefit, right? If you have a transportation management, tracing will become very, very. You know you can you can you can send notifications to the customers, and uh, you know they get information and they know what's happening. That's a major. Uh, value, international trade, compliance, right? How do you handle dangerous goods and EWM integration? 
I mean, you cannot re even you cannot think of not having this, right? Build, but who's going to support this? We have to support, right? Built-in analytics. So analytics also are important. You have to like doing the slicing and dicing on reports and uh, trying to. So why analytics is important? Uh, probably you want to find out like you know are we uh, you know are we are our KPIs and KRAs are in alignment or uh, you know are we uh, you know uh, are we paying too much or uh, you know should we have to leverage uh, you know more optimization and things like that so analytics will give you that detail then connectivity integrations and all that so different applications and all so a lot of benefits are there that is there and uh, this talks about uh, scenarios so we have like a uh, inbound uh, vendor related transportation delivery related transportation international you know across the border or across ocean and all multi model international inbound international outbound transportation ocean freight air freight intermodal rail courier and uh, express pass so i will be uh, speaking about uh, all of these uh, different uh, mode of transportations uh, at uh, various points so we will be touching all these things at uh, at some or other point and trying to get some insight in terms of you know what are the things which will happen because you know <clears throat> these are all uh, customers employ different uh, uh, modes of transportation they don't just employ road or something like that right you know they will employ i would say they will employ almost all of them okay so we'll see like you know how things uh, differentiate among them and these are uh, certain documentations uh, which are related to transportation management so you have uh, uh, well, these OTR and DTR are more specific to standalone TM. So I will talk about it separately. I don't want to confuse you guys uh, at this point. Uh, but typically, transportation management will have something called freight unit. So, uh, so there is something called a product, right? So product is the uh, product. When you talk, when you say product in the in your sales order, you you have something called a product or a material. So the customer pays for the material, right? Customer pays for the material. But when that material gets the flavor of flavor to be transported, that material gets into, uh, uh, gets packed and that becomes a freight unit. So material plus, how you can lay in, in a very layman understanding, material plus packing, uh, uh, makes it ready for transportation and that transportable uh, item you call it as a freight unit so a single unit uh, which you want to transport so you have a document which will capture those freight units right and several freight units can be uh, put in one freight order possible so you may have say five freight units you want to optimize it in one carrier so you put it in one freight order and all that stuff right so freight order is uh, normally you use this document type for uh, uh, processing uh, uh, rail and road. So rail and road, you use freight order. That's the terminology. But if you are processing, uh, you know, what do you call air and ocean, then you talk, you say you use freight booking as a document type. Okay, this is just uh, some differentiation. And you have forwarding agreement, uh, then you have a freight, uh, a freight agreement. So forwarding agreement is with the uh, with uh, what do you call the customer. The uh, so that is uh, the LSP will have an agreement with the shipper, saying that okay, I need to uh, you know uh, have these goods transported. So with the shipper, LSP, LSP, third party logistics. So his agreement is called forwarding agreement. Whereas the freight agreement is agreement with the carrier, right? So this is the agreement uh, from uh, from with the perspective of uh, the shipper and uh, forwarding uh, the LSP and freight agreement is the agreement between the uh, you know the shipper or LSP with uh, the carrier with the carrier. This is the freight agreement with carrier. Then there is freight settlement document. So what will happen is you 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 need to communicate in some document to the to the purchasing people because purchasing guys needs to pay money right. So MM needs to process the service order, service purchase order, and uh, they have to make the payment. So, but you, there is there should be a format to tell the purchase department 
to consider this uh, to be the basis uh, for settling. So then you create something called freight settlement document in which you will put all the data which is there in the forwarding order or for forward freight booking or whatever. Okay, and then you will tell the uh, you know purchase department saying that uh, boss, please settle this amount to the carrier. You know, pay it to him. Of course, the carrier uh, in this case will have to send an invoice, and they will do invoice verification and all that kind of stuff. And similarly, the forwarding settlement. So you'll have to settle with the the LSP. Will need uh, money from the uh, from the shipper also, no? Because uh, he has uh, taken the contract, and then uh, he has employed the carrier. In, in the LSP scenario. So this forwarding is agreement uh, or forwarding settlement and forwarding is always associated with LSP. Uh, so that is something which you can keep it in mind. Anyway, these will you will get familiar uh, in due process. Order OBTR and delivery-based transportation request, these terminologies will come only in the uh, ECC and uh, uh, in a standalone environment. And this is nothing but a replica of a sales order or a delivery from ECC, okay? We'll talk about it later on. Yeah, this is a typical flow of how, uh, you know, uh, how a pro TM process happens. So you process the sales order in ECC, you create a delivery. Uh, there are various uh, scenarios, uh, various ways of doing things, but this is a typical uh, flow. Sales order, delivery is processed, uh, freight units are automatically generated from the delivery or sales order, and then, you know, freights are planned and uh, then picking will happen. Uh, picking can happen in uh, ECC. I mean, it can also happen in uh, 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 warehouse also, but we will not uh, discuss that uh, now. Uh, we will just uh, see that scenario later on, but let's assume, let's go with, uh, you know, uh, our uh, standalone, wherein we have picking goods issue and proof of delivery is also happening in uh, SAP. Uh, this thing and uh, customer invoice. This is the customer invoice, right? That means you have to, uh, for the product, you have to, from a product perspective. So you need to, uh, you need to, you're selling the product. The shipper is selling to the customer. So this is that invoice. So customer, uh, the shipper will raise an invoice to the customer because he is uh, uh, delivering the goods. He is uh, going to, uh, you know, deliver the goods through the carrier. So that is that invoice. So this settle, this activity happens in sales and distribution, SD. Okay, then uh, this is freight settlement document. If you see this color-coded ones, right? This color-coded ones, uh, this is freight planning and freight settlement, right? This is delivery and proof of delivery. So this is the thing. Of course, this is freight unit again. Uh, the certain uh, certain activities like freight unit, uh, uh, you know, and then uh, uh, freight planning, freight order, these things happen in TM. Uh, we will see these uh, differentiation in the system later on. So right now, just try to understand the flow, the sales order process, delivery processed, then freight units are generated. This has to be transported. Some planning will be done. Freight units will the carrier will be assigned here. Then carrier uh, will pick up the goods from the warehouse. Then he delivers it to the customer. Then uh, since it is delivered to the customer, then the shipper will say, okay, I have delivered these goods to you. My carrier has delivered. So now I'm going to invoice to you, right? And, and in the meantime, our carrier also will be ready with his invoice. Then he will say, okay, boss, I have delivered. And you are asking money to the customer. To the customer. Now you pay money to me. So that's what he will say, okay, you will raise this and then uh, you will uh, do the settlement activities uh, and then vendor invoice. That is the carrier invoice is settled. So this is a typical process which we will see and that's the document flow. So in end-to-end -end scenario, this is how it looks like. You have a sales order, outbound delivery, delivery based freight unit and uh, freight order and then successor documents, freight settlement and then this is the MM part. So you have all the SDMM and TM integration integrated documents out here. Yeah. So we'll. Uh, this is what we are going to discuss all these things in due course. So let's just finish this off and then we'll. So the evolution part of it is that uh, earlier, as I said, 
it, there used to be uh, something called LETRA, four point, uh, right from 3.1H and all that to 4.6 and all that stuff. No, those uh, at that time, there used to be uh, not much of functionality. Uh, limitations used to be there, you know, split of delivery and uh, I mean, uh, mixing of inborn and outborn. I mean, some functionality were not been there. We'll not go into too much into this. Majorly, you will not have rendering, carrying, and all that stuff, and uh, no tracking, tracing, nothing, nothing. So that is your uh, functionality was very lean. Um, you probably have certain dates of shipment related, uh, plan, uh, you know, just a table having a, uh, some certain dates uh, mentioned, and then assign some carrier uh, whom you predetermine, and then you, you know, uh, have the shipment done. Later on, SAP has evolved into APO, Advanced Planning and Optimizing, Transportation Planning Vehicle Scheduling, right? So this is a, a system which they have developed separately. And then, uh, uh, you know, it has matured over a period of time. And uh, uh, transportation management was a part of this particular functionality. But then it was evolving over a period of time. And uh, then uh, TM uh, became a separate unit by itself. So the TM as a separate uh, application by itself, right? So standalone system is what it has evolved with. And then, right, uh, you know, it got into, uh, so the, the functionality is kept increasing. And uh, right now, what do we have? We have, uh, you know, standalone, both, both uh, situations we have, right? We have transportation management as a standalone, as well as we have uh, uh, what you call uh, yeah, embedded system. So both are running in parallel. Uh, over a period of time, this gets, uh, this probably might, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, they they both would exist uh, at this point in time, because it is possible that uh, certain organizations might want a standalone system. Uh, so this will be there and this also will be there. So uh, right now we have S4HANA 2021, right? And uh, these are certain uh, uh, LETRA associated uh, functionalities, which are uh, I mean, which are available, which are not possible. So this is from, you can go through this on the slide, which will be shared with you, just for your understanding, because we are not going to do anything in, in this one. So just uh, have a look uh, when you find time. So this is about transportation management vehicle scheduling. So what were the, uh, so this core interface is important from, uh, as uh, you know, uh, integration between ECC and uh, standalone. So that happens based on the core interface. We'll talk about this core interface. Uh, I will introduce uh, in, in the in due process sometime. But then that evolved, the core interface evolved between uh, when the APO came into picture. Okay, so that is an important one. And uh, in, uh, in at that time, SAP event management also uh, came into picture. So slowly this functionality got introduced and business warehouse got introduced and slowly the functionality got developed over a period of time, right? And now if you look at this part, uh, if you see uh, in the embedded system, so this is SAP TM functionality. Uh, for shipper, what are the functionalities which are there? For LSP, what are the functionality which are there? Okay, what are all the uh, things which are there in uh, 9.6 availability? And these uh, round, things no the the bagel kind of thing that's basically uh, additional what do you call license you just have to have some additional license for it so if you look at it the lsp there are certain functionalities which are more specifically available for lsp and uh, those such functionalities probably are not available for shipper uh, by virtue of their nature of business or so so there is some differentiation of functionalities between lsp and shipper Therefore, if you are working on any project, so you need to understand whether it is you're working on a shipper functionality or you are working on an LSP functionality. That makes a lot of difference. Uh, that's exactly, uh, based on that, you will have your functionalities in your uh, work environment, right? So that is uh, very briefly, I just wanted to share that, uh, uh, that uh, perspective. And uh, yeah, so this is a transition. So how people transition is, Basically, you know, initially you have uh, some older application, right? ECC or something. Then you have uh, TM, uh, SAP TM on-premise. I mean, you probably may not even have this. 
that that could be a situation then you move on to having a letra that is your uh, older version into it uh, and then you have sap tm as a standalone uh, you may you may coexist and then later on you may want to get this into the embedded system so that's how uh, people you know the organizations plan uh, you know they they do this planning so just just for I want to know this and uh, yeah i mean this is uh, okay this is nothing but uh, um, uh, you know tm sap hana perspective uh, i'll not go detail into this so this is just to say that there are a lot of things which are happening on hana side right from 2011 onwards until now um, so you know the many integrations especially this is important from an integration standpoint many applications are being integrated uh, you know that that's what uh, Uh, that's what i wanted to share here so you have sap leonardo and all that stuff um in internet of things machine learning artificial intelligence i will not discuss all those things right now but that's how things are moving okay this is just to let you know uh, yeah this is if you see this you have internet of things social networking devices big everything is getting connected in the sap world uh, and of course with other scenarios and all that so this is just to get an idea of where things are and uh, this is an important slide which talks about uh, how much do we have maybe another couple of slides i guess and then we will okay so this is something which uh, you know if you see uh, uh, this is the desired uh, uh, place to be in right so you have a s4 hana and then you have both uh, ecc and transportation management all in one so this is your embedded system on one sap transportation management on one instance with sap s4 ana suit this is what uh, we will be working on right so this is the desired one so uh, this is like you know what uh, what are the other situations which might exist in the client situation right you may have s4 ana two different s4 anas on one you have erp that is s4 ana on one uh, database and then you have transportation management on other database so on separate s4 ana instances connected to each other okay this situations might arise because uh, customers are evolving their landscape right so they will they cannot just jump jump into number one they will probably uh, maneuver here and there or something like that so but so therefore for uh, for you to understand like you know uh, when you get into a project situations you should not expect that everything is in just one box it is possible that there might be uh, different uh, boxes in which the applications are different databases may be but they are all connected and uh, it might not look to you that they are uh, connected but uh, be behind the screen you may have different uh, uh, servers different applications connected and all that but these are those scenarios which might exist but most of the people are now moving to embedded scenario right so this is what uh, certain deployments in uh, options tm deployment options right we we don't bother much on this for now and uh, yeah this is a probably is the last slide so as i said you know s s4 hana suit would consist of all the functionalities um, and then you have embedded transportation management and uh, this is something which is happening in all organizations uh an integration with the uh, global trade systems event management warehouse management so on and so forth so this is a very important uh, a functional area and uh, transportation management uh, becomes uh, complex because uh, it it has to it interfaces with uh, s4 you know s4 hana functionality ecc functionality on one hand and also with uh, certain uh, other applications on the other hand so but nevertheless we'll focus on transportation management trying to understand what are the functionalities and all that stuff uh, in 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 our sessions and then let us first understand what these are before uh, you can explore certain other things okay so that's what i have for today and uh, the introductory session i hope uh, uh, we could discuss these points so if anybody has any questions probably we can just uh, discuss please do ask if you have anything uh, there is some person oh okay no 
Okay, if you have any questions, please do ask. Uh, I know we have taken more than uh, an hour today. Maybe uh, it's necessary uh, being the introduction. So I wanted to take time to cover major points so that uh, the introduction should be clear. And if you have any top of the mind questions, please do ask and just address them. Did it make sense? I mean, uh, uh, I mean, am I talking logically? Does it make sense? Whatever I have done, did you understand any, is there anything uh, which is uh, which is unclear or you may want to uh, clarify? You can ask, sure. Thanks, I think this yeah. slide. Yes, yes. So uh, just to answer your question, whether it was logical or not, but definitely it was logical because uh, since I also come from a TM background and I have worked right. on it, so it was okay. a kind of a refresher session for me. <laughs> uh, I can correlate what exactly you were saying. So it, this, uh, I think this is really a good step. So okay. uh, yeah. It will no, but just... one thing, one thing, let me admit here, let me admit here. I mean, you, since you are also from SAP TM background, let me mm -hmm. admit here. Um, uh, in this uh, session, maybe, uh, there, maybe I'm like a instructor or a trainer or whatever you call it as, and then uh, students on the other side, but I'm a student as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 no, that's uh, that's a good point. I mean, I completely agree. Yeah. So it's a joint learning session. Joint so, learning session, exactly. Uh, definitely on some of the points, I felt like, you know, I could also add something, but now uh, we will see once we grow into the sessions further. Yeah, yeah, based yeah, definitely. On, based on definitely. my experiences, that whatever I have seen from the customers with whom I have worked, I'll try to add value. To, please, to please, most welcome. And uh, because uh, you see, this is vast. I mean, this mm -hmm. is vast. Uh, there's too much into it. And uh, see, we sometimes what happens is that we we are bound to focus too much in just one functional area within uh, <laughs> within a freight order itself. For example, uh, you know, we, how dates are to be determined, how some customization need to be done, how some conditions are to be, you know, configured, how some incompatibilities are. I mean, we will get sucked into the functionality so much so that mm. sometimes we also forget, I mean, uh, uh, certain configurations or certain functionalities, you know, mm. we also forget, you know, it, it does happen. <laughs> so so I keep this training because to refresh myself. No, no, that's really good. So yeah. I'll be put to test uh, whether, okay, this guy, Satish, is he talking nonsense or what? <laughs> so no, what no, happens no. is, yeah, what happens is, uh, you know, I brush up, you know, I do a lot of, uh, uh, you know, checking, reading, and, you know, since we work on the customer's uh, environment and all, the, of course, uh, we need to focus more on uh, to delivery and all that. Mm -hmm. But then that... Uh, uh, you know that uh, discipline will make us make me alert in terms mm. of the topics delivery. You know, so yeah. sometimes what happens is that uh, suddenly some configuration I didn't I forgot about this. It may happen, so don't get uh, surprised. <laughs> okay, but nevertheless, uh, you know we'll uh, um, we'll focus uh, as much as possible. Because mm. you are here uh, to make, uh, you know, of course, I'm addressing everyone. You know, they're all of them, all of us are here to, uh, to learn uh, as much as we can and then apply them uh, for making a TM career. That is the goal, right? So, uh, of course, it starts uh, in a small manner, but then our uh, understanding has to be very clear. Uh, so that I will try to, you know, provide as much clarity as possible in all the sessions and uh, of course we will um, if there's anything which uh, I need to also um, you know try to get some more inputs maybe uh, certainly that's going to be value for me and uh, um, I would be very happy to work on those, those aspects so that you know I could deliver uh, um, uh, like, uh, you know, finer um, uh, functional understanding. So we will see as we go by. Okay. So what I'm going to do, uh, yeah, any other questions? Sorry. Uh, 
I mean, it's not necessary that you should ask questions. <laughs> if in case there is anything, please ask. Otherwise, uh, no issues. Uh, what I plan to do is that we have a new system, and uh, and uh, we are configuring the end-to-end -end scenario in that particular system. And of course, uh, uh, what I normally do is, uh, you know, we configure the end-to-end -end scenarios and run the cycle and all that kind of stuff, just to ensure that everything is working fine, uh, and then. We will, uh, I will uh, do the configuration in the sessions uh, to show you like, you know, how these things are done and all that. Because many of you, I think, uh, might not have, um, you know, uh, my, my, my many of you, obviously everyone wants probably to refer to the video um, and then, you know, do things and all that stuff. So uh, my focus will be to show that on the system and uh, so that uh, you will be able to replicate it. And that replication uh, will be uh, in the form of, uh, I think we have some assignments and all that. They are all associated with what I show in the system, what I configure in the, in the session. And uh, that's how you, know, you feel more comfortable uh, when you log on to the system and do some activities and all that kind of stuff. So we'll try to make it as uh, convenient as possible. Uh, so that uh, you will uh, feel comfortable to log on and then uh, do your own uh, configuration, create your own company codes and all that kind of stuff. And uh, uh, so in the, in the first uh, situation, you try to create uh, your own stuff and don't bother if you are bumping into some error or this or that. Uh, there'll be, we have a support system. Um, there'll be some of my colleagues are there who will uh, at, uh, respond if there's any issue or something is there. So I think there is a chat or telegram, I believe. Yeah, this, that is there. So uh, that goes on. And every day we are going to connect. So that, that should be fine. Okay. So I think I took a lot of time of yours. And uh, if there's anything, uh, last question uh, we can take up. Otherwise, we'll close for today. And then we'll uh, regroup. I have some work to do on the system this weekend. And uh, Monday, we will start with another topic. Um, and then we will, uh, we probably will get into the system. Well, Satish, one, one last question, uh, or maybe yeah. one question from my end, I take the side again. Is it possible yeah. to also get a course outline, like what all things we, uh, we will be covering in which session? Uh, so that will also give us a, you know, a kind of a good understanding of how this entire course is going to go, uh, take forward us. Okay. Uh, I, I, in fact, I have shared that in the last session. Um, I, what I'll do is uh, maybe on Monday, I will, uh, I will uh, share it again. Okay. Okay. Because again, if I have to explain, it will take another 15 minutes. <laughs> no, no problem. No problem. Yeah. So yeah. I have it detailed out all the 30 sessions. Okay. Um, all we have slides and all that for all these sessions. Um, so everything has been prepared. Uh, so I will uh, first walk through, uh, you know, that, uh, that is good that you asked because many people probably, uh, many of uh, your, uh, you know, colleagues, uh, you know, they probably might uh, also want that. So I will start Monday's session with that, and then we'll jump into the topic. We'll do that. Thanks for asking that. I think that will be very helpful to others. Yeah. Thank you. And in, in the chat window, uh, Pratik, in the chat window, the link has been provided, sastrageek.com slash tm. If you click on that link, it will take you to the Teachable. And there, basically, you would be able to go through exactly as Satish is saying, right, the 30 sessions uh, uh, and the 15 uh, topics. It has been articulated in the course curriculum there. Okay. Okay. Perfect. With even assignments also, you would be able to check what assignments we have put it there. <clears throat> Miguel has one question that what, what would be the periodicity of the sessions? So Miguel, we are targeting that today we are count, uh, counting it as a session number one. So session number two would be there from uh, coming Monday and it would be there for every Monday to Friday. India standard time, 7 p.m. IST, one hour session. We are targeting one hour session because it's a daily session. So Monday to Friday, 7 p.m. IST, one hour session. 
And Parmin, the recording of the same, all the completed sessions will be available in the separate link or in the same, or uh, that you will get notified in our uh, registered mail. So uh, in the teachable link, which has been shared by uh, Aman, so in that link, you would be getting all the assignments, all the presentations and all the recordings together on our LMS platform. So teachable is the LMS platform which we are using. So uh, on that, as soon as you subscribe, uh, immediately you will get access to it. Assignments are already there um, and the presentations are already there and uh, videos will be putting it fresh as soon as we complete the video we will be putting there. Great. Okay, the video recording would be there and you will be having access till one year. Okay. Any other questions guys? Uh, Satish is still here before we disconnect for today. Okay. If you don't have any other questions, we can end our session here for today.